So, first things first, my name is Scott Kaplan. I am both a personal uh, advisor, same as you, and also I sit on the, um, as a part of the IS team at Strategies as well. Several years ago, uh, I realized that we as a group were sitting on a potential ticking time bomb that I wasn't sure how to get out of. How many of us in the room have had mutual fund portfolios, ETF portfolios, managed or unmanaged either way? Right. Now, if you recall, in 2008, we had a massive crisis. The S&P 500 was 660. Today, it's north of 20,000, right? Okay. So, if you didn't tax manage, if you didn't do much around those portfolios, except consistently rebalance, what's the capital gain in those accounts? over the last decade, let alone the last 20 or 30 years. Substantial, right? So what's gonna happen when we hit that point of when it's time for a distribution strategy? What are we ultimately going to do? We're gonna to have to realize those gains, especially in a portfolio that has not been altered dramatically over those periods of years. I saw that as an issue. Second issue that I saw is that when we're holding on to mutual funds, they're some of the most tax inefficient when it comes down time for tax year, right? How many times have we throughout the years had a discussion with a client because the portfolio was down last year, 5%, right? And they got a capital gain distribution. Depending on the size of the account, it could have been 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, $10,000 tax bill. That's a fun conversation to have. That is not a conversation I'm willing to have anymore. So over the last 18 months, I've been working behind the scenes to get this on our platform. Why? Because I don't like mutual funds. I'm somewhat biased towards ETFs, but I rather not do ETFs either. I want the incredible efficiency that's associated with individual stocks that actually mirror a passive benchmark. If I want to buy the Russell 1000, the S&P 500, if I want to put on factor base like the DFA, we have that strategist on platform for 42 basis points, QP. I think it's 42. Oh, the, the quantitative portfolios, yeah. it's somewhere in the 40 basis point range. 40 basis points is the internal expense plus what our fee is. I can create a UMA tax efficiency for somewhere around 60 or less, depending on some of the managers, substantially less in certain circumstances, plus your fee, it's lower than virtually everything else that exists out there. And then you factor in a tax basis and the overlay, now we're creating some additional alpha. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, <coughs> all in about 130? I can, I'm in at 110, 125 at the highest, highest end. I'm at 110 with 50 to me. So that's competitive to a lot of the advisory managers we're talking about, Black Rocky, et cetera. Oh. It's competitive, but we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. So here's another thing that, that was really important to me. Um, over my years of having opens, traditional opens with my clients, one of the things I always 100% ask is how do you define success, right? I don't know if, you, if you're talking about expectations to a client, but how do they define success in their existing life? And the one thing that I was able to kind of consolidate from all the answers that I've got over time was the ability to say yes. In retirement, if I want to go away with my wife because she says we want to go to Bali, or she wants to go to Bali, well, I don't want to have to think about my monetary consideration to go to Bali. I want to know, right, if I want to go. If I want to go, I want the ability to say yes. I have a client right now that I'm dealing with who is retired 62 years old, he's got a reasonable amount of assets, he wants a boat. I take that back, he wants a bigger boat, <laughs> no joke. And he has the ability to say yes. Without question, he has the ability to say yes because of the work that we do here under the guardian umbrella. We are advisors, we advise clients from the moment we meet them to the time that we decide not to be their representative anymore. And the reason why I'm expressing this to you in terms of the ability to say yes is because we have this on our platform. If you have an existing client who's at JP Morgan, who is at Morgan Stanley, or wherever, with an existing portfolio, what I've known as an IS is that people are intimidated 
to go after those dollars. A couple of million dollars in a portfolio, that is a little outside my mental capacity, my scope. Well, I'm telling you right now, that is not the case. You have the ability to do it because of the team that's behind you, whether it's internal in your agency or between Rich and Andrew and team and the investment folks who are there for you. Why? You have an existing client, maybe, maybe not, or your prospect who has five, six, seven, ten million dollars at Morgan Stanley, mostly individual securities, mostly individual bonds, maybe a couple of mutual funds here and there, an ETF inside the overall structure, a couple hundred thousand dollars of embedded, unrealized gains. Mostly long, some short. Right? What do you do now? Currently, in your, your own mindset, what do you do? You have to roll it in kind somewhere else, and the managers that you're going to wind up using will go ahead and you know, historically just blow out of it, or you put them into another strategy that you're comfortable <coughs> with. Well, I can tell you this. You can go ahead and do that Pat's analysis, and I'll be honest with you, it's a spreadsheet. You've got a client with 400 securities, you've got to fill that spreadsheet in. That's the one downside. I take that. That's the only downside. I hate that spreadsheet, but Rich has guaranteed me <laughs> that he's, he's going to do it <laughs> for the right price. <laughs> okay. So ultimately, you get that into the spreadsheet, they do the analysis, and, and without question, we will figure out, right, through their analysis, what managers make the most sense for this first stage transition, right? They'll build that UMA for the transition. But you say, you know what? I'm a DFA guy. I want passive strategies. You have to get from there to here, right? So you have the ability to transition over time into that philosophical approach that you want your clients to ultimately be in. Right? So you may be in Lazard for, for a year or more, but you know what? You're slowly working with them to transition into the philosophical approach. You start to deviate and move managers in the UMA structure. That's impactful. What does that enable your client to do? They want to work with you because you are their trusted advisor. You are the person that's helping them decide whether or not they're going to rent or buy, whether they're going to lease or buy their car, whether or not they're going to use a 529 for college, or they're going to use cash flow from somewhere else. You are the one who they're going to for answers. This gives them the ability to go, you know what? I'm going to work with you on my asset management site because it doesn't cost me anything to move over. This is my, it's one of my most recent ones that I've been working on. $569,000, uh, $596,000 um, case, embedded gains of $38,649. I said, I do not want to realize any short or long term gains. I want to move it over. Okay? Ultimately, I was a little disappointed. $29 of taxable consideration to move over. Their tax burden was $6. And we just did this case, so I don't know, maybe we can go ahead and realize that $6 in terms of loss before the end of the year. All right, so it actually may be an alpha. We may even realize some additional losses to offset naked, maybe reduce their ultimate taxable burden ultimate, right? So the model was chosen by me in terms of two of the strategies, actually three of the strategies, two equity, one fixed income, but they had embedded gains inside a mutual fund. A couple of mutual funds, actually. We just rolled them over into the UMA. We enabled them to basically put those existing funds, because they're on platform, right into the UMA. You don't have to create something so dramatic. You don't actually have to create anything. You've got a team behind you that actually does that, okay? So this was a, a relatively simple example. 25% of the portfolios in existing mutual funds that were able to realize additional gains above, I'm sorry, losses above and beyond our estimated tax bill of $6. I can then start to remove myself from the mutual funds which I personally, philosophically, do not want in my clients' portfolios because of the pitfalls, right? I don't like spreadsheets and I don't like mutual funds. So this is reminding me of uh, an offering, I think, probably a lot of us in the room probably used curing back in the day. Um, but now, they're, no, they're no longer in business. Well, oh, yes. I, oh, I know <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. but, but I think one of the fundamental differences is it sounds like we have the flexibility on choosing the managers, which was not our option with Curian. And it sounds like here, whereas with Curian, it was all well, once and done, this is a transition over time to manage those tax aspects. That's right. 
Yes. Yep. It, is exactly. this generated, this analysis generated by InvestNet or by PASS? Yes. Well, it goes I, through PASS to so invest in the information that comes yeah. back. This, yes. is, this is an investment output, and if we can get to the next couple slides, we'll go okay. through what okay. that, the, the, the total, it's called the PASS analysis, the closed asset transition summary, okay. and we'll be able to okay. illustrate what that looks like. There's, there's two things, right? Number one, John said this morning, was it this morning? Yes, yesterday, and his, there's over seven plus billion dollars outside, No. right? What does this do? What does this enable you to do? Right? Address that now. You have the ability to go out to a client that you haven't gone out to for whatever reason. Inside your own mind, right? We sometimes have to get over that hurdle. You now have the tools to be able to do this. You have the support to be able to go out and, and address that without any consequence to the client. Another scenario, by the way, just so you know, is that once you put all of that in there, um, all inside that spreadsheet, you have the ability to have them match a manager to the existing assets, right? As a part of the transitions. That, that's impactful, right? And you can choose to keep that manager again, transfer it out. So that, that gives you the opportunity to present the client and ultimately give them the opportunity to say yes, okay? Because they want to work with us. They want to work with us, right? They've transacted with us. They want your advice. Any questions on that one? Second step is what if you are, um, you know, got a client with a modest amount of money, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, and you like, BlackRock, or you like any one of the existing strategists that are currently on platform, right? And you're adding money to an ongoing basis. Next day, the client calls you up. Oh my God, I'm a lottery winner. I got another half a million dollars. What am I doing with it? Well, you can take that existing strategist, BlackRock, for example, and you can just create a new UMA. You can roll that BlackRock strategy right into a UMA and then add an additional layer of individual security to two or more sub-advisors. Are you referring to like the BlackRock ETF model? Yes, yeah, yes, exactly, right? If you're currently using that in your portfolio as a means, right, because it's not big enough of an account, right, for accumulation, now all of a sudden, they hit that accumulation point where it's north of $500,000, right? But you don't want to sell out of all BlackRock position because again, it creates a taxable concern. But you want them to be in additional <coughs> um, individual securities for the tax purposes and trafficking. This gives you the opportunity to just roll inside the program, right, without having to do much. And the paperwork, as you know, is relatively simple these days, and electronic. So you don't even have to transact that difficult. But BlackRock would still retain, would still manage their the own The integrity portfolio. of its allocation, 100%, right? So this, in my eyes, has changed the game for us. And I hope that you feel empowered now to go after some of those assets that you haven't before, because you have capabilities now that we didn't necessarily have to this extent before, and the flexibility. And, and John and team have built out something that incredibly powerful as a tool for you be able to get those $7 billion on platform under your control where they belonged in the first place, but you felt maybe encumbered by something that we're putting the brakes on. Yeah, we're over. 